Growing up within the conservative evangelical church, there was a real emphasis upon being certain of your Christian beliefs. More recently, some Christians have begun to doubt that very notion of certainty and suggest that perhaps we ought to doubt our beliefs, that that is in fact the healthy way to approach Christian faith. So how should we think about these matters? Well, let's begin with a quick look at a traditional view. Uh, John MacArthur in his book, The Truth War, Fighting for Certainty in an Age of Deception, he writes, let's consider this notion that certainty about anything is inherently arrogant. That view is wildly popular today. The belief that no one can really know anything for certain is emerging as virtually the one dogma postmodernists will tolerate. Uncertainty is the new truth. Doubt and skepticism have been canonized as a form of humility. Right and wrong have been redefined in terms of subjective feelings and personal perspective. And as you can imagine, all of this MacArthur sees as a grave mistake. It is not doubt which is something to be canonized or valorized, but rather it is certainty. Doubt for MacArthur is the problem. Certainty is that which brings us to truth. A very different perspective comes in Peter Enz's book, The Sin of Certainty, Why God Desires Our Trust More Than Our correct beliefs. Enns writes, even if we have never verbalized it to ourselves, let alone to others, don't we all at some point have a nagging background noise of doubt, a deep undercurrent of cognitive dissonance, where what we were once so certain about evaporates like a dream? Well, I can say yes, in my experience, that is true. I have had a background noise of doubt, and that has led to me changing and modifying various beliefs. But I also have to say that I don't think it's true, as Enns claims, that this is the case for everyone. My father had a religious experience in uh, 1952. He never had a doubt after that, not that I could ever see. And he carried his certain convictions right up to the time he passed away in April of 2019. It would seem to me a little bit presumptuous to say, Dad, deep down you really do doubt, you just haven't come to terms with it yet. So how should we think about this whole question of certainty? and doubt. Well, uh, let's start off with this. Do we choose our belief or do we choose our doubts? Can we go through our day and ask a question like, hmm, what should I believe today or what should I doubt today? On the contrary, we don't exercise that kind of direct control over our beliefs and our doubts. I can't change my belief in the way I can will to move my arm. I find myself with my beliefs and I may find myself with certain doubts. So immediately we've taken belief and doubt out of the direct realm of our voluntary control. And that's an important thing to recognize. So some Christians may never doubt in their lives. Other Christians may always struggle with belief in their lives. And I think it's a mistake for us to see either one is mistaken or wrong because this isn't necessarily something that they're choosing for themselves. In fact, could it be in the manner of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, then just as the body is served with the diversity of many parts and they all serve the whole, so the community of faith is served and enriched both by pe people who have deep, unshakable convictions, people who are always certain of their beliefs, and it is also served by people who have doubts, who are pressed on, who want to question. Think about it like a boat. Uh, for a sailing boat to be uh, an effective vessel in traversing the ocean, it first of all needs ballast. And you can think about that ballast as the certainty of convictions that are held by some Christians within the community of faith. But it also needs wind in the sails. And you can think of that wind in the sails as the doubts of other Christians that can push the community of faith on in a direction of growth. So I would suggest that just as a boat needs, certainty, uh, needs a ballast and sails, so a healthy Christian community needs both those who find certainty of convictions and those who have doubts and questions in their convictions. Rather than create a, a stigma for one or another group, I suggest that we should just recognize that everybody can serve the community of faith in our collective journey of understanding better who God is and what he desires of us.